Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning. Jerry's down here going morning. He's from Alabama, so we, we can't, we, no, I'm just picking. But he is from Alabama. I was just picking on him. But uh, anyway, it's good to see everybody out this morning. We'll get ready. Everybody come in, grab my seat, and uh, we'll get a few things out of the way and get into our service this morning. Mount Vale, let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. So glad you are come to worship the Lord with us, those watching Facebook and live streaming and all that. But if you can, stand for the reading of God's Word this morning. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, says, Then came the word of the Lord, saying unto me, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye come to inquire of me, as I live, saith the Lord God? How many have come to hear from the Lord today, to be with the Lord today? Have you come expecting today? Hello. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated just for a few moments. Uh, if you are visitor with, visiting with us today, we're so glad you're here. Hopefully our FIT team gave you a connection card. We'd love for you to fill that out on the back. There's a box you can drop it in or you can QR it or go to text uh, and, and fill it all out digitally. Just a good way to keep connected with us and we with you and all that good stuff. Also, if you've got children, we've got three to five-year-old class going on right now, six to 11 going on right now. I always get confused if it's 6 to 11 or 6 to 12, but it's 6 to 11. If you'd like for your children to go there, our FIT team can take your kids over there and you with them and, and show you where it's all at. We also have the nursery open this morning. So, But again, thank the visitors for being here. Mount Vale, let's, let's make them welcome one more time for being here this morning. Amen. Amen. If you are a visitor, we do have 6 o'clock evening service and 7 o'clock Wednesday night service, so uh, please, anytime you want to come visit us, come visit us, and hopefully you'll join us, amen, so let's, uh, I don't think we got too many, oh, real quick, one quick announcement, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to move, you probably noticed the sign coming in that they're having a barbecue sale today, and I thought it was interesting that today is National Barbecue Day, so you can get some barbecue on the way out, and it's, I think it's $6 a plate, it's a to-go thing, so it's all proceeds are going to our um, camp meeting. And uh, so in August, so please, if you'd like to be part of it, hey, you can't, you can't buy a $6 plate at Buddy's. Come on now. <laughs> just saying. But anyhow, but if you'd like to, please help. Or if, you just, if you don't like barbecue and you just won't give them some money, they'll take it. So <laughs> it's all good. But let's stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. How many's come to worship the Lord today? Amen. I think about worship sometimes, and sometimes we almost undervalue worship. Maybe that's the right word to use. We undervalue the power that's in your worship. Think about this, and we quote this scripture a lot, and I'm going to move this just a minute, but the Bible teaches us that the Lord will inhabit the praises of his people. That word inhabit really means to enthrone. So what that really translates to is that when you begin to worship God and you begin to give him a clap offering and you lift up holy hands and you begin to sing, his kingdom comes down. In the midst of all your struggles, in the midst of all the circumstances in this world, the kingdom of God begins to settle in your praise. And how many knows when he shows up, things never stay the same? Amen. When he shows up, things begin to change for the good and for the better. So sometimes we almost underestimate worship because I think or undervalue because we think it's just part of the process to get to the Word and then we get to the Word and we get out. But I come by to encourage somebody this morning in your valley, in your trial, in your test, in the uncertainty of this world and in your life, if you'll begin to worship God, trust me, He'll do what He says and He will inhabit your praise. He will. His kingdom will come down in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your circumstances. How many can testify today that God has showed up and done something in your life some way, somehow this week? Amen. Amen. So I, I want us to do this this morning, then we're going to pray. But I think it's so important that we get our minds right and set on things because 
the world bombards us with all kinds of stuff this morning. We got worried about the bills. We worried about the kids. We worried about this. We worried about that. We we worried if we when the, when the weather's got good and the fish are biting and you know what I'm saying. <laughs> we got our minds elsewhere. Sometimes when we come in, how, how many how many ever how many can say that? Sometimes when you come in here, your mind's a million miles away from why you're here. It's okay. We're all human. Come on. But I want us to do this just for a few seconds. I want us to begin to focus upon him because that's the reason we came. Some of us are worried about how we're going to pay the bills next week. Some of us are worried about what the doctor said. Some of us is worried about our marriage. Come on now. Let's be real. I, I'm, I'm too old not to be real anymore. Some of us are worried about if we're going to make it tomorrow. Some of us are worried what's going to happen to this country, and we ought to be. Come on. Some of us are worried what's happening in the world right now. They're bombing Israel, and Israel's fighting. We, we're so worried about everything. But I want you to do this this morning. I want you to begin to focus on him because he is the only one that can fix everything. Come on. He's it. Not from the White House, not from Senate, not from the Congress, not from other world leaders, not from the who, but him, Jesus Christ. He's it. He's the answer to all things. Amen. So I want us to do this. I want you right now, for the next few seconds, just give him your best praise you've given him all week long. Your praise. Your worship. What you're doing, you're inviting him to come into your situation. You're inviting him right now to come into your mess. You're inviting him to come right down into this place. If we'll worship him, woo, I feel something stirring already. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Let's ask God to inhabit this place. Let's ask God to move in this service. And let's worship him with everything we have. Amen. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the men and women who have come to worship your name, God. God, we're asking you right now, God, to inhabit the praises of your people, God. We're asking you, God, to do what your word says, Father Lord. And we're asking for your Holy Ghost fire to begin to fall in this house, God, to begin to fall upon men and women in this place today. God. God, we're asking for those that may not know you, God, that they'll come to know you, God. Those who maybe got away from you, come back to you today, God. We're asking for you to set the captive free, deliver those who need deliverance, open the door for the prisoners that are bound, Father God. We're asking you to begin to move like never before in this country and in our services, in our lives, Father Lord. God, we're asking you, God, to do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in this place today, Father Lord. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, strengthen, encourage, and set free in this place, Lord. Lord, we're asking you, God, to break forth like never before, God. Let the power and the presence of a living God fall in this house this morning, Father Lord, and fall upon your people today, Lord. And Lord, we ask God right now, Father Lord, that your will and your way be done in this house this morning, God. And we ask it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shout, Amen. Once like a bird in prison, I dwell. No freedom from my sorrow. Came and listened to me and glory to God. He said, Be free, yes, he said, Be free, he said, Be free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. My glory bound my Jesus to see. Oh, glory to God, he said. The bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. Glory to God, He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things I could found. Not of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to and glory to God. I'm going. The bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. For glory to God, He set me free. Oh, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. He 
to give the Lord a good praise. How many's been set free in the house? Amen. How many's had your sins unwashed in the blood of Jesus? Amen. Woo. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be set free? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If the ushers will get ready or the fit team will get ready, it's time to receive our tithes and offering this morning. Again, it is, we'd love to welcome Mount Vale. Let's make our guests and visitors welcome again. We're so glad you're with us today. So glad you are come to join us and worship this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches us this, this, us this about giving. He said that the, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Y'all turn to your neighbor and say, cheerful giver. He said, you don't give out of necessity or begrudgingly, but you give because of a cheerful heart. Now, a lot of times, here, 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 don't you see this real quick? A lot of times we give out of necessity. We think if we give, then we're going to get blessed, and that's true. The Bible teaches us that, but we shouldn't give just to be blessed. Ooh, got quiet real quick. <laughs> we shouldn't give just because the pastor sends up and says, you ought to give. Come on. You ought to give because Christ showed us first how to give. Or God showed us first how to give because he gave his only son. Come on. And the Bible says we're to be cheerful about it. We're to be happy about it. Think about this. There's only a few things you can even give back to God. One is your worship. One is your time. And one is your finances. Come on. Now, how many know you can't give enough to God for what he did for you? you can't, I, I want to say this. I'm afraid we're inundated by television too much that we've been taught that you can buy a blessing. We've been taught that through the TV that you can, that if you give a thousand, then you're going to reap ten thousand. I tell you, that's a false teaching. The Bible nowhere does it teach that you can buy a blessing. Nowhere does it say that if you'll sow a thousand dollars, you're going to get ten thousand dollars. There is the principle of reaping and sowing, but the problem is we look at blessings as materialistic things. The Bible says that he will pour out a blessing on us we can't handle, but how many know if you got up in your right mind this morning, that's a blessing? How many knows if you got a roof over your head, that's a blessing? How many know that you are able to lay down at night and go to sleep with peace in your heart, that's a blessing? How many know if you got your family sitting beside you today in the house of God on their way to heaven, that's a blessing? Amen. So I encourage you this morning, if you haven't tithed or given, you, you ought to start. Amen. And try God. See what he'll do. So let's stand if you're able. Let's be cheerful. Amen. Can y'all smile real big? Let me ask you this, and I'm going to move. How many is real cheerful when you write your mortgage payment out? Ain't none of us are. I got it one more time. I got it again. But here the Bible teaches us to be cheerful when we give unto God. So when we come to the give the offering plate, we ought to come. I, I like the little uh, River and Jason, a few of them. When them little boys run up here, they run to give the offering. Not us, Pete, not us adults. We're like, okay, we're coming up. We ought to be the opposite. We ought to be leading them on how to be cheerful when we give. So when you're coming up here to give your tithes and your offering, you ought to look at your neighbor and say, be cheerful and smile real big at them. How many can do that? Try it. Try it to your neighbor's side. You say, be cheerful. Because that's what the Bible teaches us. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get ready. Get your tithes. Get your offering ready. I know. Seeing how long Jerry wave his arms over. He's trying to flag down a plane. I don't know if y'all see him over there. <laughs> oh, help me, Lord. How many you got, Sheriff? Got 139. Can we give the Lord a praise? Amen. <laughs> For visitors that don't know, he takes up KJs, and it's a dollar. It has a K or a J on it, which stands for King Jesus. And this building we're sitting in is debt-free, based on a lot, a good portion, I don't know the percentage wise, was given through that ministry right there. So if you can, please help him out. He always needs a little help. I don't care if he's got a thousand dollars, he'll need a little help. So if you can, please do that. Amen. So let's pray. 
Let's get ready to give our tithes. Let's get ready to give our offerings unto the Lord. Father, we come to you this morning, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise, Father God. We thank you for your blessings that you do bestow upon us, Father God. We thank you, Father Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives. God, we thank you for the men and women who faithfully give unto you, God, every time, God, Father Lord. And God, we ask you right now to take the tithes, take the offering, multiply it for the use of your kingdom today, Father Lord. And Lord, through it, people will be saved and sanctified and healed and delivered. God, through it, through the ministries that go outside this house, Father Lord, that people will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you right now to bless the gift and the giver, Father, as they bring their tithes and offerings unto your storehouse, Father. Amen. Welcome to Mount Bell Church, where our goal is for souls. My name is Lisa Norton. We are so honored and thankful that you have joined us today, whether you're sharing online or in the sanctuary. We come with great expectation that God will move and bless in a mighty way. We'd like to welcome all guests and visitors. If this is your first time here, stop by the Connections Desk located in the foyer for an exclusive welcome gift just for you. Our First Impression team members are here to answer your questions about our church. We want to stay connected with you, so please fill out a Connections card. Do so by texting 97000 or scanning the QR code. We invite you to come out to our Old Time Dinner on the grounds, which will be held on Saturday, May the 29th. Since the church will be providing the chicken, we are requesting each family to bring a side dish, a dessert, and drinks. Please have at the church by 11 a.m. to be served at noon. Sign up for what you will bring at the Connections Desk or on the Church Center app. We would love to see everyone join us in all the fun activities planned for our Old Time Dinner Saturday, May the 29th. Invite everyone you know. To stay connected with what we are doing, like and follow us on social media, download the Church Center app, or visit us on the web at mtvlcog.net or just grab a church bulletin. Just remember, we are saving you a seat. Until next time, God bless. Join us now as we continue with praise and worship.
Of your name, 
to give the Lord a good hand clap of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just lift up your voice and say, thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, amen, now may Israel say and now may Mount Vale say, amen. So good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning, amen. Let's give all our guests and visitors a real warm welcome. We're so glad to have you with us come more than twice we keep you amen and uh, sometimes we'll come to your house and tie you up bring you back all kinds of stuff we just want you to come back amen praise the lord hey immediately after service today uh our ladies are putting together a uh, barbecue dinner I, they told me what it was i don't know what it's in it but it's gonna be a good deal for six bucks the thing they wanted me to remind you of there's gonna be two dinners that's give out uh, that'll have a little ticket in there and if you get that one with the blue ticket is that correct then, then that dinner is worth 50 bucks. So if I was you, I'd buy up all the dinners. Amen. And the reason they're doing this is in August, we have our camp meeting, amen. And we're putting together a great lineup of speakers. I mean, some good people that preach all over the world. Some of them do. And they're going to be right here at Mount Vale. Some of the finest preachers, amen, in this world will be right here preaching from this pulpit coming in August. And it'll run a whole week, amen of revival and camp meeting amen so uh if you will and you can help the ladies out out there and, and uh fellas i'm just gonna give you a full warning they're already saying to us what y'all gonna do so some of y'all better be getting ready amen let's all stand for the reading of god's word look at three people and say you look good on your way to heaven today three people say you look awful good on your way to heaven if they say I ain't ready to go to heaven today, say, well, come on, let's just go to the altar. We'll get this took care of this morning. Everybody looks good, but Leonard, look at him down there pulling on his beard down there. Mark chapter 8. Good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Poor old Leonard. Amen. He is my job security. Praise the Lord. Everybody's got a job at Mount Vale, but he's mine. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He keeps me up late at night praying for him. About 1 o'clock in the morning the other night. 
My wife comes in there and says, honey, come on to bed. I think Leonard might get saved. I said, honey, I don't think he's going to make it. I'm really concerned for him. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you. Mark chapter 8. So good to see you. Going with our theme today that we started last week, touching Jesus. Amen. You know something? If you can touch him today, everything. Amen. He can fix everything. He can fix all the wrongs in your, in your life. Amen. Not only, amen, not, it's not if you can touch him, if you will let him touch you, amen. Amen, if you'll let him touch you, you can be healed today, amen. I don't want to put any restrictions on the service today. God can, God can do anything he wants to in this service. And I promise you, this old boy get out of his way and let him do it, amen. And I'm going to preach today that I feel your faith comes to the place that you can receive, amen, from the Spirit of God. And I'm going to get out the way and open up the altars and we're going to gather in these altars and we're going to seek God and we're going to get what we need from Him today. How many is with me today? Praise the Lord. Amen. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. And He cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto Him and besought Him to touch Him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town where when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw all. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell it in any to any in the town. Let's pray. Father, today we give glory and honor unto you. We're so thankful, Lord, that we have this opportunity to, to assemble in the name of Jesus today. My prayer today is, God, let the word of God have free full course in this house. Lord, let faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God and touch us, God, in your presence, by your power and your spirit. God, I'm asking for those that might be lost that today would be the day of salvation. Those that are discouraged, that they'd be encouraged. And those that are cold and indifferent, God, that you would draw them in. Draw the backsliders home, God, today. By your Spirit, God, is the only way we can move today, Lord. No man can come save the Spirit. Draw him. Draw in this house and have your will and way. We'll give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, look at somebody and say, you can eat some barbecue today. All right, you might be seated. Amen. So good to see you in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Isn't it good just to be saved? I'm just so glad to look around and see the signs of the times that are around us. Amen. Hey, you know, uh, I'll, every time I turn on the television, and I quit watching secular news a long time ago, but even trying to get the uh, in the morning, just trying to get a hold of the the weather, which they don't even know what that's going to be either. But even but you see the signs of the times, amen, coming, and evil men are waxing worse and worse, and I'm getting excited. Everybody's getting mad, but I'm getting excited, amen. And 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 they're trying to legislate things against the church, amen. And and they're trying. And I mean, it's just bad everywhere you look. And the more I look, the worse it gets. The more excited I get because I know that the Bible said, amen. When we saw these things happening, he. Said, Said, look up. It's time that you and I begin to look up and begin to watch for his coming because I want you to understand the next, the next earth shaking event, amen, may just very well be the coming of the Lord and he could come today. How many believe that? Praise the Lord, amen. And he comes to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. Amen. Have you, have you ever been there in your life that you just needed a touch from God? In ministry, the, the problem with ministers that burn out is they get to a place they can't get anywhere to be ministered to. Amen. I try my best to take in a message or two every day from people that I trust and I know that's preaching the truth. And I, I try my best to get in the presence of the Lord every day that I live. Amen. Because I, I don't want to burn out. I've seen some, I've seen some bad case scenarios where ministries have burned out. Amen. Because they weren't, they, they, they lost the touch of God. They lost the oil of God out of their life. Amen. I, I'm, I know I'm saved, but sometimes I just need God to, touch me. Amen. How about you? I don't know about you, but just sometimes I just need a, a little touch. Amen. I just need God to move in my life, stir my spirit. One more. He, don't have to, he don't have to move a mountain for me. Just touch me. And I believe I can go on a little further. Amen. I, I come to submit to you that we're so close to the coming of the Lord, I'd be afraid to get away from God right now. I said this last week, a good friend of mine that was a uh, was an associate pastor in a church that did, I could preach the walls down, just quit, just walked off, left the ministry. Amen. 
amen, walked off, left the church, amen, not preaching, not going to church anywhere, amen, just following the flesh. And, and I thought, what a time it is, amen, that people are just getting away from God right at the end. Right? I mean, you're going to miss the big show, amen. It won't be long, amen, till we'll hear the sound of the trumpet, amen. It won't be long till the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. It won't be very long, amen. I believe that in our lifetime, I'm not saying the Lord said that, I'm just saying me as a person, as a Christian, amen, that reads the Bible, I think in our lifetime we'll see the coming of the Lord, amen. And this man had some friends, amen, that uh, this man had some friends, amen, that uh, uh, that loved him. He was a blind man. He just needed a touch. As I began to look at some people that just needed a touch in Matthew 8 and 3, amen, a little leper came to Jesus and he says to him, amen, he said, if you will, he said, uh, uh, if you will, he said, uh, you can make me clean, amen, you can heal me. And Jesus just touched him and said, I will, amen. The two blind men, Matthew 9 and 20, amen, Jesus said to them, according to your faith, let it be. He, can I just tell you this, amen, that he wants to touch people. I need to get that down on the inside of somebody, amen. Somebody said, you don't know where I was. I said, I don't care where you was last night, amen. Last night was then, amen. Every morning we wake up with new mercies, amen. His mercies is new every morning, amen. And it's time that you realize, amen, that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. It's time that we realize and know that this God, amen, has invested a lot in us. He loved us so much that he sent his son to come and die on a cross of Calvary for you and I, amen, and the fact of the matter being is, amen, he, he takes it very personal when we walk away from him, he takes it very personal, why is it because he loves us like nobody else, he knows our inward hurts, he knows why we act like we act, he knows why, well, or he knows why we do what we do, amen, and he loves us anyway, the thing I could never figure out about Christianity was this, how in the world, I knew me, amen, and I knew I was not the guy that could, I, I knew I wasn't the guy that needed to be in church for the way I acted, amen? But he loved me anyhow. He looked past my faults and he loved me into this life-changing salvation that only comes through Christianity. You know, there's a lot of different faiths in the world. There's a lot of different belief systems, amen, that they believe in this God or that God, amen? But there's only one God, amen, that can change your life from the ends. If you're a Muslim and you steal, they cut your hand off, amen? But in Christianity, Christianity, your heart changes and the Bible said, let him that stole steal no more. There's a radical and essential difference between us, amen, and what we need from time to time is just another touch from the living God. Anybody need a touch in the house today? Give God a good praise if you do. Amen. Amen. Mark 7 and 33. Talking about the deaf mute with a speech impediment. He took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue. Amen. He touched him. Hey, uh, uh, if, if you want to today, I mean, it's, it's entirely up to you, but if you'll line up here today and you need some help from the Lord, I'll just go by and spit on everybody. Anybody raise your hand? Get ready. I'm playing, please don't be. If you're a visitor, you know, I'm just kidding, amen. No matter how sick one, uh, no matter how sick, one touch is all that they need. No matter how long the dry spell, amen, one touch is all that you need. No matter how sin sick, amen, one touch, I don't care where they came from. I said a few weeks back, I said, I wish to God we could get some prostitutes coming to church here. Two or three people looked at me real funny. I don't want them to stay prostitutes. I just think they ought to be welcome to come. We ought to have some drunkards that walk through the back door and say, when I drove by the place, the Spirit of God met me in the road and drawed me in. It's time that you and I get about the Father's business. Can I tell you, amen, everybody ought to be welcome to come sit right there. Everybody, no matter how they look, where they come from, what color they are, amen, or what sin they're wrapped up and tied up in. Can I tell you that God is not looking at them for what they are right there, but he sees them already for what they can be in him. If any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Somebody believes that ought to give him a good praise. My Lord, my Lord. 
I come to exhort you today. You can touch him. He wants to touch you today. He wants to move in your life. And for those who say this is impossible, it's an impossibility. Maybe the doctor said it's an impossible situation. I love it when the doctors are wrong. How many believe with me? Amen. I love it when they say there's no hope and they still live and sitting right over there. Amen. I love it. Amen. When they step into the room and they have no bedside manner. They don't care. Amen. They're trying to get to the next one. They'll walk in the room where you're at. Sorry about you, love so much, amen, and out the door they're gone, there's nothing we can do, and we've saw this one, I've saw hundreds of cases, and nobody make it, and you know what, you ought to say out your mouth, you ought to say out your mouth, it might have been 199, but the 200th one is going to come out with the victory, I'm going to come out with my healing, I'm going to come out with the joy of the Lord being my strength, Oh, look at your neighbor and say, he's trying to preach if you let him preach today and say amen a little bit, amen. Watch what Jesus did, though. Verse 23, put it on the board. I'm going to add a little bit right here. He, uh, Mark 8 and 23, please. And he, and, he took the blind, and he took the blind man by the hand. The first touch was the touch of the friend that brought him to Christ. How many have you brought with you today? Amen. We had this church of God folk. We used to have this us for no more attitude. Amen. Acts 2 for us, so us for no more. We had this, as long as me and my house to say, praise God. We're going to, listen, I want you to understand that's a religious spirit. Amen. Because Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Drink of the waters of life freely. It's time that you and I get a burden for somebody else. Can I just tell you this? Amen. Those, amen. If, 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 if the gospel is hid today, it's hid to them that are lost. He was physically blind and he represents a lost and dying world out there that is lost and they can't see. Can I tell somebody it's too late, amen, to run up and hit him in the head with the King James family Bible. It don't work like that no more, amen. I remember the day when it did but it don't work anymore. We are the epistles of God that are openly read of all men. They are watching our lives. They're blind to the gospel. They don't think they need him, amen. But I want you to understand with me the only way that they'll ever see him is if they see him in your life he wants to love through your loving he wants to touch through your touching he wants to speak through your speaking today and they're looking for something that is real they've seen enough fake they've seen enough phony and it's time that you and I become the light in a world of darkness taking them by the hand and leading them to Jesus Ooh. And he took him. The second touch he got was the hand of the Lord. And he still couldn't see. That speaks to the church. It's been to the people that come to church. And, and, and the Lord has took them by the hand. And he's led them out. But they still can't see. They come and they're hung up in religion. And religion will make you so miserable you can't stand yourself. Hey, religion will make you so miserable you nobody can stand you either. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't be around a religious crowd. Do you? They're always they're always nitpicking your clothes. I mean, you, you got the right clothes on or, or, or I don't know. Amen. Some of them got mad. I had one get mad at me one time because of growing a mustache. I said, my great God in heaven, Jesus had a beard. Oh, that was only because he was in the praetorium for four or five days. I said, let your beard grow for five days, honey, and let me see if I can get a hold of it and pull it out. I said, Jesus had a beard. If it's a sin for a man to grow hair on his face, why did God make hair come out of our face and our ears? Look at your neighbor and say, you got hair in your ears this morning? <laughs> And he took him by the hand. And he's still blind. And he's walking with Christ and he's still blind. He can't see. Some of y'all sitting here today can't see like you need to see. Amen. Some people that's watching my Facebook, if you was not blind, you'd be sitting in a church somewhere assembling yourselves together. Somebody said, oh, I'm scared of the COVID. I'm not taking anything away from it. And I'm not saying it's not real. And I'm not saying that people don't get sick. But I want you to understand, I am saying that God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind and I want you to know if Jesus wants me he can come and get me and I tell you this if I get the COVID and I die Jesus will come and get me before the COVID ever takes me out and it's time that you and I stop operating in a spirit of fear I passed a church this morning a good friend of mine used to pastor he and I were best of friends 
And I, I, they're still doing parking lot church. You know what they need? I'm being mean. Yes, I am. Look at me. I'm telling you right now, I'm being mean. They need a pastor that's not lily-livered and scared to assemble and preach the gospel of Jesus. We're too close to the end to be sitting in a parking lot saying somebody flash your lights and somebody wave at the Lord with your windshield and give him a good toot on the horn. I come by to tell you this. The Bible said, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. The Bible said, lift up your voice like a trumpet. It's time that you and I come together and not be afraid. Amen. Walking in the house of God saying if there's anything like touching him today I'm going to touch him. My God if it wasn't Sunday morning we didn't have so many visitors I'd scare the regular people off. Amen. Jesus had invested a bunch of time in Bethsaida but got nothing in return. Watch the verse. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Watch. Jesus had pronounced a curse on them in our, uh, 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 prior to this for their unfruitfulness. Jesus went in to bring a blind man out of the cursed place. No, no, watch. Jesus, this is what Jesus said. Look, he's, he's walking with Christ. He's holding his hand and he's still blind. And Jesus said, to get you some help, you're going to have to get away from the people you've been hanging out with. Amen. Hey, listen, you can't slop the hogs out coming out smelling like hog. I'm just country. I can't help it. I ain't making no excuses for it. I'm fat, I'm ugly, and I'm country. Amen. Think about it. Think, think about it. You can't lay down with the dogs and not get the fleas. And watch, if you can't see and you're holding the hand of God, you must be walking with some people that are blinder than you that are walking in darkness. And we become, hey, we become who we hang out with. If you want, hey, if you want to be a millionaire, they say hang out with millionaires. They'll teach you how to be a millionaire. Amen. I, I, had, a, I had a friend of mine that came to church here, amen, and, and, and he was kind of a, of an aggressive attitude, just blah, just right in your face kind of thing. And I didn't mean nothing by it. I just told the truth. I said, I said, sinner folk, I said, drunks go to bars, Christians go to churches. He had issue with it. He met me after church. He was mad. He said, that's my ministry. I said, dear sir, you keep hanging out with them people. I said, it's going to put your light out. Oh, no, it's my ministry. God sent me there. I'm telling you, he was there last night, and he was probably the drunkest one there. Amen. It got him. Amen. And it's time that you and I understand that when Jesus went into Bethsaida, he got the blind man and took him out away from the sinners. And if you're having problems in your Christian walk this morning, it might be the fact that you're walking around with a lot of people that's in more darkness than you are, amen? And you need to get away from them. Somebody said, oh, they're my family and they're my friends. I want you to understand the only way that the light will ever come on for you is to come out from among the world and be a separated people, saith the Lord. If any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Amen. And Jesus had pronounced a curse on them because the gospel had been preached there. And there was and he, and he didn't reap anything. And he went in to bring a blind man out. And I know this really messes with our theology. It's Pentecostal holiness people. Amen. Uh, but Jesus. We'll go to the cursed place sometimes. I gotta get a drink of water on this one. You ready for it? I, I wish, to, well, I don't wish, but I know some good people, amen, that was raised in church all their life and never went out, and they're proof that God can keep you out. I'm proof that he'll come to Bethsaida and get you and bring you out, and people say, oh, I don't believe like that. I've said many a time, I said many a time in a bar and felt somebody tap me on the shoulder, if you will, amen. Look, and it wouldn't be nobody, but it was in my spirit, and I hear the Lord speak to me. Somebody said, oh, he don't go. I beg to differ. He come in there on me a time or two and dealt with my heart and spoke to me, amen, and, and it was after me. I was in there, and he was after me, amen. He came right up in the VFW and sat down beside me and said, what you doing in here, boy? Then your mama raised you, but somebody said, oh, I just don't believe it. Don't believe it if you don't want to. You might have been that one 
one that God kept out, amen? But I'm the guy that he went to Bethsaida that was as blind as blind could be. I had religious, I had religious ways. I had religious friends, amen? And I thought I was gonna go to heaven sitting on a bar stool when he would come in there, tap me on the shoulder, tears would run off my face. People say, he's a crying drunk. I said, no, I'm a drunk under conviction because Jesus came to Bethsaida and got a wretch like me. And he did some of y'all too. Then he brought Ron. I love Brother Dragon back here. His wife said, we got to call him Ron now. She says she's the dragon slayer. Praise the Lord. <laughs> some of y'all don't know Brother Dragon. I thought I could cuss, man. That dude could cuss when I met him, amen. He don't cuss no more, though. He met a man, told him everything he ever did. Hey, man, can you give God? He come to get you, didn't he, brother? He was in a mess. I was in a mess. How many can just testify? Hey, I was not raised, I was not raised up in church. I was out doing everything that I thought I wanted to do in my life. And he came and got me. I come to tell you, he'll come and get you out of Bethsaida. He'll come and get you out of a bad house, a crack house, a bar. He'll come after you. Oh, I know I messed up something. Oh, I, I cannot believe that this holy Jesus he's preaching about will come. I want you to understand for this reason he came. I seen a preacher on Facebook and I just I, I like to I like to do a little bit of preaching on Facebook sometimes, you know. And he's talking about people in the crack house and people on meth and how he wished every one of them was dead. And I and and, and everybody was commenting a worthless piece of trash and garbage and I, I mean just all the way down through there. And I just put in capital letters and put it right down there with the rest of them that was condemning them. Amen. And I said, for this reason he came. I come to tell you, amen, you've not been so bad that he don't want you, amen. I come to tell somebody, amen, the devil talking in your ear this morning, said if they knew what you did last night, they'd run you off. How do you know? That's what he told me when I walked in the back of Bean Station Church of God and I was fearful that somebody might have seen me in a bar. I was fearful that somebody might have known who I used to be. I want you to understand, Jesus came and got me out of Bethsaida. Anybody with me today? My God, I'm saved today because he came to a cursed place. I'm saved today because he walked in a bar and talked to me. I'm saved today. Amen, while I was riding down the road, stoned out of my mind, he'd get in a car and talk to me while I had my music so loud, I couldn't hear nothing, but I could hear that voice down on the inside of me saying, boy, your mama raised you better. Your mama took you to church. Accept me and come out of this darkness. Can I tell you, he has went into Bethsaida for some of us. We were raised. We were lost. We were undone. We were not worthy, amen, to call upon that lovely name. And he came and got us anyway. Amen. To the blind man, familiarity is everything. We uh, had a funeral this week and I took my grandbaby and took Jerry. I don't know why my little grandbaby likes him, but she does. And I've taught her about people that, you know, come from Alabama, but she's not really learned just yet. But I'm playing, I'm playing. But uh, I, I, I just what I told him, I said, we get here. I said, you stay in the car with her for a few minutes. I said, give me a chance to get in there, talk with the family a second, speak to the funeral home director. I said, then bring her in because she's coming to, she's coming to Paul. And uh, we got in there, and, and, and just like I said, she came to me. You know why? She's familiar with me. She knows me. To the blind man, familiarity is everything. He wants to be amongst people. He did not know the hand that took his, and that's a scary thought. Amen. The Son of God had him by the hand, and he did not even, could it be that he would show up in this place today and some of you not even know he's here? Can I just tell you he's been here since the first prayer we prayed in this place in a mighty way? Can I tell somebody that just because you don't feel him don't mean he's not here? Maybe your wood might be wet if you're 
fire is not lighted when he shows up, amen, but he's still here. Oh, I know, preacher, he's here. He's all over the world. He's omnipresent. Yes, he is. But he came today to this place, amen, to reach out, to get a hold of somebody that's blind and cannot see and lost in trespasses of sin and bring them out of Bethsaida. That's what he came for today. And you need to understand that there are people that he has by the hand and they don't even know it's him. Can I tell you, I have an announcement to make to Mount Vale Church. Jesus is here this morning. He's moving by his spirit. He's touching those that want to be touched. He's healing the sick, saving the lost today. Look at three people say, he's here. Amen. Many people never will receive from God because they'll never let their faith step out of the familiar. Can, 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 I'm not being mean. I've been around long enough to know the kind of the schematics of church. And I know how to preach for the missionary Baptist. I've preached for them a lot. And the primitive Baptists and the Southern Baptists, they have their customs. We have ours too. I, I think we're all about part of the body of Christ. Hey Amen. There was 12 tribes of God's children, and they were all significantly different. And we, we, I, I believe that we are the part of the body that the oil is poured out in, where the Spirit of God is allowed to move in the midst of his people. Amen. I, I want you to understand familiarity. Some people come and they say, I ain't never seen nobody act like that. This can't be God. Because all they've ever seen is everybody gather around the altar. And anybody got a word? Anybody got a testimony? Any, has anybody got a praise report? And then everybody gathers up, praise. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying anything wrong with that at all. I've seen it done so many times. I've been right in the middle of it so many times. Amen. But God don't only just move that way. Amen. He don't just, he don't just move where everybody prays quietly in their seat. I've seen him move that way. Amen. He don't just move when they turn car wheels run all over the building speaking in tongues I've seen him move that way and I kind of prefer that way myself but I want you to understand amen he's here amen this is the place amen right here where he abides it's not the building he abides right here somebody said I hope he showed up I know he did I brought him with me and some of you brought him with you amen and some are holding his hand and don't even know he's got you by the hand don't even know that the son of God that in him is life amen and the life is the light of me don't even know just yet, but you're about to find out, amen. You're about to know him on a personal level when he opens your eyes and you see that he is the way, the truth, and the life. When he opens your eyes and you see that he is the God that will save you. My God. He's holding his hand. He's taking him out of the dark place. You know what he wants to do to you today? He wants to get you by the hand, lead you out of the dark place you're in, into a place of light. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 5. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. God wants to take the church places we've never seen, but we won't let go of our traditions. We have a... I don't suggest you do this, and I don't do it anymore. But I used to attend a snake handling church pretty regular. On Friday night, man, it's the best show in town for a buck, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I'd sit in the back. I was pretty intrigued with those people. My wife would cry, and she'd say, you're going to get right in the middle of them. I said, you've lost your mind. If they throw a snake on me, I'll whoop everybody in the building. I can't take it. But you know, they... To them, God comes in a snake box. Snake box. And uh, some, he comes into a water baptism box for them. And then some, it comes in only in the name of Jesus' water baptism box. And to some, they have to turn cartwheels. And I'm not saying that God's not in, but I'm just saying that God is trying to pull us away from all we know about him and show us so much more than what we already have. See, can I tell you this? For the time, we ought, we ought to be teaching. 
but we still need to be taught and we need to understand that when we come together, we don't we don't have to muster up. I've seen people stand at the altar and say, Oh, if I could just get if I could just get a little faith, just a, the faith of the grain of a mustard. Oh God, give me yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Come in here, just believe that he is. The Bible said, Amen, that we ought to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We ought to come in here and we ought not wonder or hope or think, Oh, I wonder if God's gonna show up. I wonder if he's gonna say, I come in this morning knowing if there was one lost person in this house, he was going to save them. I come in today believing with all my heart if there was one come in today that was sick in their body that God was going to touch them and heal them. Why do you believe such a thing? Because I know the characteristics of God. Amen. And I know why he came. He came to save and to heal and to deliver and set the captives free. That's what he wants to do. And we're so hung up on the way the church of God does it or the Baptist does it. Or the Methodist? I got a friend of mine. I'm going to a Methodist church. Preach revival. Y'all pray for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try. It's hard to hold it back sometimes. I don't want to scare nobody off. But I have respect. Because we just see God in one way that he can move. But he's so much more vast than the way that we see him. Verse 23, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes... And put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. He asked him, he said, how you seeing now? He said, well, it's not dark anymore. I don't, it, it, this is the church. That's the church. Got him by the hand, can't see. Well, it's better than it was before. went home the other day. I had one that big on top of my head. I must have really preached hard. Big old strawberry right there on my head. I'm going to have to get me some cushion things for my mic. And, and we come to church and, and, and we're, looking, we're looking for it to get a little better. He was out of the sinful place he came from. He was really out of darkness because he could see. But he couldn't see clearly. There's a lot of the church who can't see clearly this morning. There's a lot of the church that are standing pulpits all over the world. We just talked about one in Sunday school this morning, amen. Uh, a, a pastor that I know is member died drunk and it, it, it or possibly did, amen. We don't know for sure a hundred percent, but I do know that he likes to drink with his people. And, and, and he led him the wrong way. I promise you this, if he'd come here, I'd have taught him it was wrong to do that and you shouldn't be doing stuff like that, amen. There's a lot of the church, amen, that can see a little bit, but they can't see clearly, amen. They've not opened their eyes to the real gospel of Jesus Christ that'll cause you to see all things clearly, amen. They wanna run around with a half, uh, well, it, it's a better than it was. I, you know, I ain't, I ain't in the bars no more hardly like I used to be. I go every once in a while. I, you know, I, and I don't really get drunk, but every now and then and kind of thing. And, and I don't really get high except when I'm around my buddies, you know. Lord, kind of understand stuff like that. No, I want you to understand too much of the church right now is walking and God's got them by the hand and he's trying to pull them out of a cursed place and they still can't see like they need to see, amen. They still, if they saw like they needed to saw, to saw. If they saw like they needed to see, amen, then they would come out from among the world. If they would see Christ in his glory and the power and authority that's in him, they could come out from among the world. They could be a new creature. You know what he wants to do? He don't want to hurt your flesh. He wants to kill your old man and resurrect you a new man. That's what he wants. Hong Young's coming next month. How many remember Hong Young? We'll probably have to get him a stool so he can see over this. He's a little Chinese dude. I went to China with him. He said, Pastor Fowl. He said, come to Mongolia with me. He said, we preach the gospel in Mongolia. We eat come on yuck. I said, yuck. I don't need no camel and yak. I said, how much you need? I'll send you. I don't want to go. Amen. He said fried chicken. I'd have probably got on the boat with him. But uh, you got to understand with me. God, and I said that to say this. He said, God don't want to hurt your pride. He wants to kill it. And God don't want to hurt the old man. He wants to kill him out. Paul said, you are dead in Christ. Your life is hidden him. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Come on, somebody. 
You know what he wants? He's trying. You, you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to give you a new nature. He's trying to make you a new creature. There's a lot of people that's affiliated with church, and they see a little bit, but they can't see clearly. This man walking with Jesus, he come out of the cursed place. He come out of darkness. He can see a little bit. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I refuse to leave you to where you can just see a little bit. This is the plan of God for your life and for my life. That we come out of the cursed place, come out of darkness, and see all things clearly. He said he took him by the hand. He led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he said, I, I see men walking as trees. Most people stopped praying right there. When it got a little better, they just quit praying. Amen. We give up on God sometimes when we need to pray again. If the Son of God prayed again, you need to pray again. Verse 25, and after he had put his hands upon his eyes and made him look up, he was restored and saw every man clearly. You know what Jesus really wants for your life? He wants you to see all things clearly. He wants you to be able to identify the traps of the enemy and the devil that's trying to drag you back out. Just because you got saved don't mean the devil will give up on you. He's really working harder on you than he is the lost people. He's already got them. He knows how to keep them. He's trying his best to pull you back. And you know what? One of the biggest reasons he wants to pull you back, sometimes it doesn't even have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with your babies. Because I, prom I promise you they'll do what you do. They're going to do what you do. If you go the way of the world, they're going with you. If you go to hell, they're going with you. I told a good friend of mine, I told a good friend of mine here, it's been some years back now, and he said, he said, when my children were born, I wept because I knew one day they'd have to die. And he said, and I didn't want them to have to die. And he said, I so love my children. I said, if you really love them that much, why don't you bring them to church? I said, because right now at the state you're in, you're going to hell. And I said, if you don't get straightened up, you're going to lead them with you. And can I tell you this? He ended up divorced, moved on to another woman, raised a whole other family. And all them from that marriage, amen, none of them go to church. They don't want anything to do with God, amen. You know why? Because they followed his example. And I want you to understand that God is reaching for dads and moms in here, for, for children, young men and young women to pull them out. But the enemy's really fighting the mamas and the daddies to keep them from getting what they need. Because if you have a real experience in God, it'll haunt your children to the day they die. And they'll have to come to God one day. If you live right in front of them, they'll know how to do it. Now watch, 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 watch. They're going to come to the music. i got to quit. Now watch. When the man said, he testified, he said, I see like I need to see now. Verse 26. Jesus said, don't go back to that place no more. Nor tell it to any in the town. He said, you don't need to go back there. Can I tell you, some of you was brought out this morning to the house of God. You come out of a bad place last night. And today, he's saying, now that you see that the gospel has been presented to you, that Jesus Christ loves you and comes to lead you out of darkness into this marvelous light, he's saying to you, don't go back there anymore. Amen. Hebrews 10, 38, standing all over the building. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul will have no pleasure in him. This, is, this, was, this, this verse right here changed my life so much so that I committed it to memory. Peter, the rock... Simon, the unstable one. He was unstable sometimes, and sometimes he was on the rock. He knew something about backsliding, Peter did. Peter penned these words in 2 Peter 2 and 20. He said, for if after 
they've escaped the pollutions of this world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are entangled therein and overcome. He said, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it had been better for them to have never known the ways of righteousness. Jesus said, you can't go back. For it had been better for them to have never known the ways of righteousness. He said, don't even tell nobody. Don't even go back. You can't go back. For it had been better for them to have never known the ways of righteousness than to have known and turned from a cold holy commandment delivered unto them but has happened unto them according to the true proverb the sow that's washed returned to the water and the mire and the dog returned to its own vomit you know what he said you know what Peter said Peter said you can take a hog out of the hog pen and clean him up but when you turn that rascal loose his nature see I'm, I'm preaching to somebody that ain't listening to me this morning Something is wrong when you turn and head to the hog pen wide open. I'm not saying you don't fail. I'm not saying you won't fall down. I'm just saying that Peter said there's something wrong with your nature. And Jesus said, don't go back. Peter said it'd be better if you never known than to look back. And I want to ask you something this morning. How do you see things? See all things clearly? Is it pretty dark around where you're at right now? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Saints of God praying. Prayer walkers are walking. They'll never come to you and drag you out. They'll just walk so you don't have to walk by yourself. If you step out and reach for them, they'll take your hand and walk you down here and help you pray Do you see all things clearly. How do you see things this morning? Do you know he wants to touch you today. He went to an accursed place to get a little blind man to bring him out of his blindness. And he wants to get you by the hand today and not make it a little better. He wants you to see all things clearly. For if you saw what I see in the Spirit right now, you'd know that there's angels all over this building in this house today. If you could see what I could see in the Spirit this morning, you'd see the Spirit of God moving in and out of every aisle, touching hearts and minds in this house today. If you could see what I see this morning, I see the love of God shed abroad in our hearts in this place as we knit together by the Holy Ghost. And God has reached and touched some people's hands this morning, and He wants to bring them out. He wants them to come out. He wants you to see all things clearly. I'm opening the altars for whosoever will. Let him come. I'm opening the altars for that, the one that may be lost, that today would be the day of salvation. I'm opening the altar today for that one that's backslid on God and see men's as trees, amen, and it's prayed and it's got a little better. I'm going to give you opportunity to pray again that you see all things clearly. Would you come? needs a touch from God. Some of your brothers come. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Help our brother pray. Would you come? Heads bowed, eyes closed, saints of God. Praying is a serious time, children of God. Jesus is moving in this house ever so gently. He's touching ever so gently. He's moving.
Let's give the Lord a good praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. These can continue to pray as long as they want. And let me say this. If you didn't come up and you need prayer, feel free to stop any of us and we'll pray with you. Amen. That's what it's about. Amen. Amen. Wow. There's such a sweet spirit here right now. Can I say this? If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to know Him. I say this all the time, and it's true. It's the only way you'll get out of this world alive. Amen. The only way. I can't help but say it because I think we're inundated, especially our young people today. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Harry Krishna can't save you. The Church of Scientology can't save you. You can't be good enough or bad enough. The only way you can be saved is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the only Son of the living God. That's it. Amen. All right. If you'll stand, we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Amen. I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning. Amen. Such a great spirit this morning. Don't forget, buy you a barbecue dinner on the way out. It's $6 a plate. If you don't have cash, that's okay. There's a kiosk back in the corner back there, or you can probably go to our church center app and give just market camp meeting, and they'll know what it's for, or barbecue dinner, whatever you'll do, and they'll know where it goes. Uh, I think it's $6 a plate, so uh, remember that. Don't forget tonight service at 6 o'clock. Invite somebody to come out. Amen. Uh, trying to make sure I got all my notes covered. But again, shake some hands. Let everybody know you're glad to see them this morning. Amen. One old man said it this way. He said, it's glad to be seen. How many know sometimes it's just glad to be seen? <laughs> so it's all good. But let's pray. Let's be dismissed in a prayer this morning. Father, we come to you today, God, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, God, for the move of your spirit. We thank you for the lives that were touched and changed in this house, God. We thank you, God, that you came, that we might have eternal life, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you, God, to move, continue to move in this service this, uh, this, uh, this week, Father God, and ask you to be with your people today, Father Lord. And we ask it all right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.